Hello there. Today we'll be generalizing slopes to any arbitrary function. So here is this function. Okay. It, yeah. It looks very random. And by function I mean there's only one value of y for each value of x. Okay, that's the standard definition. And the function is you know nice and smooth. I mean there is no jumps. Say for example uh, something like this. You know this is the graph. The function is like this and then it suddenly goes like this. No. Not any jumps. The function is continuous. Alright. So we talked about slopes and today we'll be seeing what is the slope at any general point. Okay. Let me um, call this point x0. What is the slope of this function f of x at x0? Okay. The slope changes. Well, let's see. First we, how do we do this? Well, first drop a line. Okay. This is our point. And then what we do is we uh, make a tangent right at this point, something like this. And then the slope of this line is the slope of this function f of x evaluated at x is equal to x naught. Okay. X naught. Well, with that being said, you must you might ask okay how do we do this well, let's see we kind of overdo it and then start to approximate things so here's how it goes let me just you know expand this graph okay. so around x is e around x is equal to x naught when the neighborhood of x naught it looks something like this all right just an approximation and so imagine this is the x-axis okay and this is your x naught so say this point now drop the perpendicular there you go so what we do is we take draw the line and let it intersect at two points okay so the tangent intersects at only one point this line intersects at some two points let us say the first one is x naught and this value okay where it intersects is x naught plus delta x okay this length is delta x okay x naught plus delta x minus x naught so this length will be delta x Okay, and what is the value of this function at x naught? It will be f of x naught, and value at this point will be f of x naught plus delta x. Fine. Now, what our strategy will be is to take the slope of this line, all right, and then we reduce delta x. Okay, so we will take delta x to towards 0. So if delta x will reduce this point, okay, this point right here, will slowly and slowly approach f of x naught at this point. This point, f of x is, this is f of x naught plus delta x. So delta x decreases, you get this point. It decreases even more, you get this point. It approaches towards 0, you get this point. And then we see how the slope changes. So the slope, first it was something, this red line, then it will change towards a blue line. So what is the slope of uh, this line, this red one? Well, it's delta y divided by delta x, we know that. Uh, well, let's just do delta y divided by delta x. So what is delta y? Okay, we take these two points we draw this right angle triangle all right so delta y this is delta y and this is delta x 
Now what is delta y? Delta y is nothing but f of x naught plus delta x minus this value. And this value is nothing but f of x naught. Alright. So the slope okay, is approximately, it's a, it's a rough, roughly is again delta y by delta x. We know this. And where delta y is f of x naught plus delta x minus f of x naught divided by delta x. This is this, this is approximately. And now we'll reduce delta x. So as delta x will go towards zero, this this line, this red line, okay, it's look it's looking like this. It will slowly and slowly move and become the blue one. So the exact slope, all right, the exact slope m at x naught is equal to this value, okay, f of x naught plus delta x minus f of x naught divided by delta x. But we take the limiting case where delta, delta x goes towards zero. So limit delta x tends to zero, f of x naught plus delta x minus f of x naught. This is nothing but delta y divided by delta x. All right. So we evaluate this and then we evaluate this for our given function. Notice the function isn't given till now. So we evaluate this for our function and then we get some terms in delta x and then we see, okay, as we reduce delta x, how will it change? And this slope, okay, is also written as dy divided by dx all right dy by dx equal to limit as delta x approaches to zero this part f of x naught plus delta x minus f of x naught divided by delta x and this is evaluated at x is equal to x naught at x naught okay at some other point it may be different for example the value this is this line has some slope all right now at any some different points let us say this this one this the tangent the slope is something like this all right and at some this point it is it is uh, nearly zero all right so slope changes uh, as the function changes and how does it change well it depends on the function which is not given there in this case. So this is a formula for dy by dx. Okay. So how does y change with respect to x? Okay. The rate of change of y with respect to x dy divided by dx. Now using this definition, we'll try to, we'll solve an example. Okay. And see how this works. So the example which I'll be doing is uh, from concepts of physics written by Dr. H.C. Verma. Okay, it's a good example. So say we have a plate, okay, of some metal, a square plate. Now, it's, if it's a metal plate, the thing is, when you ex heat metals, they expand. All right. And now you heat this plate, so it expands and let us say it becomes another square, all right. This has, let, it, let, this, have, let this have a length delta L, L, so and let it increase, the, let the length increase by some amount delta L, the length of this entire red square will be L plus delta L. And what we need to find is what is dA by dL. How does area change with respect to L? Alright, let's do this. So first you need to know that okay, area is nothing but L square. Okay, very simple. So as area uh, length, length or length will increase, your A level also increase. So 
A plus delta A. Okay, so your initial area plus your change in area will give you the final area, which is this big one. All right, will be nothing but the big squares area. Okay, the red one. This will be the side of the red square. The whole thing to the power two. So L plus delta L square. All right. Uh, now let's expand this. So A plus delta A is equal to L square plus two L times delta L plus delta L. The whole thing square. But what is L? L is nothing but our initial area, which is A. So we can just replace it with A. So A square plus this entire part, A plus delta A, and then the A is cancelled out. Okay. So we have left. We are left with delta A equal to two L delta L plus delta L square. And now we need to find da divided by dl. Okay, so da, uh, as we studied in our in the previous section, so da divided by dl. Okay, will be nothing but the limit as this delta l goes to zero. Okay, it was y in this case. It was uh, x in this case. I just changed the variables. It is nothing but uh, a of L plus delta L minus A of L divided by delta L. Okay, and this is nothing but A of delta L, L plus delta L minus A of L. It means the final area minus the initial area. Okay, this is nothing but delta A, delta A divided by delta L with the limit that delta L tends towards zero. We'll see what this means. So first we evaluate. Delta I by delta L. Okay, so this is delta I. We divide both sides by delta L. So delta A divided by delta L is delta L cancels off from this term, and then it's squared. So we are left with only one of the delta Ls. This is delta L. And now we reduce delta L in this quantity towards zero. Okay, so what will happen to this quantity to L plus delta L as delta L will reduce to zero? So this quantity will go down. This delta L will become smaller and smaller, and eventually, as it will go to zero, only the two two L term will be left. All right. So the limit as delta L tends towards zero, okay, of this quantity, delta A divided by delta L, is two L. All right, the delta L will vanish. And this is nothing but da divided by dl, right? We studied from our definite from what we the derivative. So da by dl is 2l. So how does area change with respect to your length? Depends on your length. That is the key takeaway. And yes, it is. Uh, in de de it depends on your length. So at x is at uh, l equal to two meters, your a will change. Four. It has units of four. Okay. The number will be four. The units are in meters. Okay. And if your L is equal to three, your DA by DL is will be uh, yeah, DA by DL will be six. So again, the rates how area depends on L indeed depends on your length. And we see how it can change. In next video, I'll be dealing with some. Functions like sine, cos, the exponent function, and see how their derivatives work. Till then, thanks for watching.